Thousands of Palestinian civilians have been killed in brutal Israeli bombing of the Gaza Strip. This is a small strip of land that is just 40 kilometers or 25 miles long. It is one of the most densely populated areas on Earth with 2.3 million people, and they have been trapped under an Israeli blockade since 2007. Israel controls everything that goes in and out of Gaza, and Israel has imposed a complete siege, preventing all food, electricity, water, and fuel from going into Gaza. At the same time, Israel is massacring civilians, carpet bombing civilian areas. The mainstream Western human rights organization, Amnesty International, has said very clearly that there is damning evidence of war crimes as Israeli attacks wipe out entire families in Gaza. Amnesty described the Israeli attacks as a cataclysmic assault on the occupied Gaza Strip. It described the attacks by Israel as unlawful, including indiscriminate attacks which caused mass civilian casualties and must be investigated as war crimes. Amnesty added that these Israeli attacks have caused horrific destruction and wiped out entire families and said, quote, Israeli forces have shown a shocking disregard for civilian lives. They have pulverized street after street of residential buildings, killing civilians on a mass scale and destroying essential infrastructure, while new restrictions, meaning Gaza is fast, running out of water, medicine, fuel, and electricity. And yet, while Israel is carrying out these blatant war crimes that the entire world can see, the United States government is strongly supporting Israel, refusing to criticize it in any way. On the contrary, Washington is giving billions of dollars in weapons and military support to Israel, helping it carry out these war crimes against besieged Palestinian civilians in Gaza. And on the international stage, the United States is preventing the United Nations from sponsoring a ceasefire. The United States is using its permanent seat on the UN Security Council to block any attempts by countries around the world to bring about peace. So it is not in any way an exaggeration to say that the United States is preventing peace and encouraging more war crimes and ethnic cleansing. This comes at a time when even Israeli scholars who are experts on the Nazi Holocaust have come out publicly and said that what Israel is doing is a textbook case of genocide and the U.S. is supporting this textbook case of genocide. In less than two weeks of bombing, Israel has killed more than 4,000 Palestinian civilians, including nearly 3,000 children and women in Gaza. This is according to data that was published by the United Nations Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs, that is UN OSHA. And according to their update report published on the 20th of October, they found that 4,137 Palestinians had been killed. 70% of the casualties were women and children. That is to say, nearly 3,000 children and women killed by Israel in less than two weeks of bombing. At the same time, 1.4 million Palestinians have been internally displaced, that is kicked out of their homes inside Gaza, and that is out of a population of 2.3 million. So the majority of Gazans have been displaced by the, these Israeli attacks. Furthermore, the UN Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs said the complete siege of Gaza continues for the 10th day as Israel prevents the entry of desperately needed humanitarian aid, including food, water, medicine, and fuel. At least 30% of all of the housing units in Gaza have been destroyed or damaged, and there is a full electricity blackout compounded by the ban on the import of fuel to run backup generators that has continued for 10 days with no electricity, with devastating consequences on the access to health care and drinking water. Meanwhile, as Israel has killed more than 4,000 Palestinians, 
It is also bombing hospitals, schools, shelters, and even churches inside Gaza. On the 19th of October, Israel bombed one of the oldest churches in Gaza, which is the St. Porphyrius Church. It's an Orthodox church that is roughly 1,000 years old. And this has angered churches around the world, different Christian churches, not only the Orthodox Church, but even, for instance, the Vatican published a statement. And this is from the Vatican's website, the Catholic Church's website, Vatican News, titled, Churches Condemn Airstrike on Greek Orthodox Building. Now, they don't mention it was Israel that did it, but here they say in this article, quote, at least 16 Christians, and by the way, we're talking about Palestinian Christians living in Gaza. At least 16 Christians, including 10 from one family, were killed on Thursday, that is the 19th of October, during an air attack on one of the buildings within the compound of the St. Porphyrius Greek Orthodox Church in Gaza. And this was, they said, caused by Israeli missile strikes, according to the Greek Orthodox Church. The Greek Orthodox Church condemned this strike as, quote, a war crime that cannot be ignored. The Greek Orthodox Church said that Israel is, quote, targeting churches and its affiliated institutions in addition to the shelters they provide to protect innocent innocent citizens, especially children and women who lost their homes as a result of the Israeli bombing of residential areas in the past 13 days. Now, while this is happening, while Israel is bombing hospitals and schools and churches and mosques and other civilian areas, the United States is using its power at the United Nations to prevent calls for a ceasefire, to prevent peace. Now, this has happened on two different occasions in just one week. So, at the United Nations on the 16th of October, the Security Council blocked a call for a ceasefire that was proposed by Russia. And I'm reading here from the official United Nations news outlet, which is UN News. And it noted that the UN Security Council failed to adopt a resolution proposed by Russia that would have called for a humanitarian ceasefire in Gaza. And what did the voting look like? Well, it was the Western colonial powers in Japan in support of Israel and its war crimes, and it was the global south either calling for a ceasefire or at least abstaining. So there are 15 members of the UN Security Council. Five of them voted for the ceasefire. That was China, Gabon, Mozambique, Russia, and the UAE. They voted for the ceasefire, and four countries voted against the ceasefire, including France, Japan, the UK, and the US. Of course, the colonial powers that have a history of committing genocide and ethnic cleansing. And of course, the US and the UK and France have permanent seats on the UN Security Council, which gives them veto power. And then there were six countries that abstained, which were Albania, Brazil, Ecuador, Ghana, Malta, and Switzerland. Now, the reason Brazil abstained is because Brazil had its own proposal that went to the UN Security Council two days later, and the US vetoed that proposal as well. Here is another report from the UN News Agency, and the headline is very clear. US vetoes Security Council resolution. UN News wrote clearly that the United States vetoed a UN Security Council resolution that would have called for humanitarian pauses to deliver life-saving aid to millions in Gaza. Now, in this case, there were 12 countries that voted in support of this resolution on the 18th of October. That was two days later. This resolution was proposed by Brazil, and instead of calling for an immediate ceasefire, it called for humanitarian pauses. So it was a weaker resolution, but it was a resolution that was trying to bring about peace. And the countries that voted in support of it were Albania, Brazil, China, Ecuador, France, Gabon, Ghana, Japan, Malta, Mozambique, Switzerland, and the UAE. There was one country that voted against this resolution, which once again was the United States. This is the definition of being a rogue state. The U.S. is going against 
all other countries on earth, basically, and supporting more war and opposing peace, opposing humanitarian pauses. And there were two countries that abstained. The UK, of course, a close ally of the US that also supports Israeli war crimes, and Russia abstained. However, Russia abstained because it c complained that the resolution was too weak. And instead, Russia had said that it proposed two amendments calling for an immediate, durable, and full ceasefire. And also, it called for the end to attacks on civilians. Those amendments were opposed, again, because of the U.S. So even though Russia abstained, it abstained because they said this resolution was too weak. And the Russian ambassador to the U.N. said that this second proposal had, quote, no clear call for a ceasefire and will not help to stop the bloodshed. That's why Russia proposed amendments calling for an end to indiscriminate attacks on civilians and infrastructure in Gaza and condemned the Israeli imposition of the blockade and called for a new humanitarian ceasefire. These were measures that were called for in the previous UN Security Council resolution proposed on the 16th of October by Russia. Again, that, that's the resolution that the Western colonial powers voted down. And in response, Russia's ambassador to the UN blamed the, quote, selfish intention of the Western bloc. He said that Western countries basically stomped on global hopes for peace to bring an end to the violence. And of course, you know, the U.S. blamed Hamas, 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 and as always, and said Israel has the right to supposedly defend itself, which it's not doing, actually. U.N. experts and human rights experts have said that Israel is committing war crimes. It is not in any way defending itself by imposing a complete medieval-style siege on Gaza. And what's not that well known by people in the West is that Palestine is not a member officially of the United Nations, but it is an observer state at the United Nations. So Palestine has a representative at the UN, and he said very clearly that what is happening in Gaza is not a military operation, but a full-scale assault against the Palestinian people and a massacre of innocent civilians. He said, quote, nowhere is safe in Gaza, Families embrace every night, not knowing if it is for the last time. And he said, he told the UN Security Council, quote, do not send the signals that Palestinian lives do not matter. 138 out of the 193 members of the United Nations officially recognize Palestine as a state. And they represent the vast majority of the world population. In fact, if you look at a map, of the countries that officially recognize Palestine, you can see that it's the Global South countries plus Russia, and it's the Western colonialist countries that refuse to recognize Palestine, even though they hypocritically constantly claim they want a two-state solution, they actually have done nothing to support a two-state solution and have actually continued supporting the Israeli apartheid regime as it colonizes more and more Palestinian land, stealing more and more Palestinian land. So never forget this ridiculous hypocrisy when Western governments talk about international law or human rights. They're going against the will of the vast majority of the actual international community representing the vast majority of the world population, which, I mean, it shouldn't just be called the global south. It should be called the global majority because the global majority recognizes Palestine and stands with the Palestinian liberation struggle against Israeli colonialism. This was actually acknowledged blatantly by the Financial Times, which is, you know, a British newspaper, a very mainstream Western newspaper. And they published an article titled Rush by West to Back Israel Erodes Developing Countries Support for Ukraine, which has always been exaggerated. In fact, Ukraine has really only been supported mostly by the Western imperial powers. And this article in the Financial Times has an incredibly revealing quote. This is from an anonymous diplomat from the G7, which is the group of seven countries, the colonial powers. So that includes the Western powers plus Japan. And this Western diplomat said, quote, 
we have definitely lost the battle in the global south. All the work we have done with the global south over Ukraine has been lost. Forget about rules. Forget about world order. They will never listen to us again. Although this is exaggerated because the global south has never listened to the west. The west doesn't control them. They're not their boss. They're not their colonial oppressors anymore, at least formally. But what this reflects is the fact that as the world has become more multipolar, as global south countries have risen economically and been able to challenge the neo-colonial policies of the western powers that oppressed them for hundreds of years, they now have more space to exercise their own sovereign political views, to, imp to have implement their own sovereign policies, and to actually have a voice on the international stage. And that's why they're now condemning these Western colonial policies in support for Israeli colonialism and apartheid and war crimes. The Global South has always supported the Palestinian national liberation struggle, but now they have more room to actually defend those policies and to have a voice. And this article in the Financial Times says very clearly, quote, some American diplomats are privately concerned. The Biden administration's response has failed to acknowledge how its broad support of Israel can alienate much of the global south. And the phrase broad support is really an understatement. The U.S. has been giving a complete green light to Israel to massacre Palestinian civilians. In fact, U.S. President Biden traveled to Israel. He met with Israel's far-right extremist prime minister, Benjamin Netanyahu, and Biden echoed complete propaganda by the Israeli government after Israel bombed a hospital in Gaza, killing hundreds of Palestinian civilians. The U.S. backed Israel's propaganda narrative, blaming the Palestinian victims themselves. Meanwhile, the U.S. government has been sending billions of dollars in military support to Israel. So this is in addition to the, the $3.8 billion in military assistance that the U.S. gives to Israel every single year. Well, in addition to that, Congress has approved $4.3 billion in aid for Israel. And as CNN put in its report, this includes $10.6 billion for assistance through the U.S. Defense Department, including air and missile defense support, industrial base investments, and replenishment of U.S. stocks being drawn down to support Israel. So giving Israel more weapons that it's using to massacre Palestinian civilians. So the U.S. is directly complicit in these Israeli war crimes. And it also included this, this latest U.S. aid package for the Israeli apartheid regime, also included $3.7 billion for the State Department to strengthen Israel's military and enhance U.S. embassy security in Israel. While the U.S. is doing this, Top United Nations experts are saying very clearly that Israel is planning to carry out ethnic cleansing. This is obviously a crime against humanity. This was acknowledged very clearly on the United Nations official website of the UN Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights. I'm reading from the website here, quote, a UN human rights expert warned that Palestinians are in grave danger of mass ethnic cleansing and specifically, this is Francesca Albanese, who is the UN Special Rapporteur on the Situation of Human Rights in the Palestinian Occupied Territories. She is an Italian human rights expert and lawyer, a specialist in international law. And she said, Palestinians have no safe zone anywhere in Gaza, with Israel having imposed a complete siege on the tiny enclave with water, food, fuel, and electricity unlawfully cut off. This is illegal. And she said, quote, There is a grave danger that what we are witnessing may be a repeat of the 1948 Nakba or the 1967 Naksa, yet on a larger scale. The international community must do everything to stop this from happening again. And the UN expert noted 
that Israeli public officials have openly advocated for another Nakba, the term for the events of 1947 to 1949, when more than 750,000 Palestinians were expelled from their homes and lands during the hostilities that led to the establishment of the State of Israel. It was a textbook case of ethnic cleansing. And then furthermore, the Naksa is what led to Israel's illegal military occupation of the West Bank and the Gaza Strip in 1967, displacing 350,000 more Palestinians. And the UN expert, Francesca Albanese, she also said, quote, Israel has already carried out mass ethnic cleansing of Palestinians under the fog of war. Again, in the name of self-defense, Israel is seeking to justify what would amount to ethnic cleansing. I'm continuing to quote this UN expert, quote, any continued military operations by Israel have gone well beyond the limits of international law. The international community must stop these egregious violations of international law now before tragic history is repeated. And she called for a ceasefire. Now, this statement was made on the 14th of October. It was made before on the 16th of October and on the 18th of October, the United States vetoed the Russian and Brazilian proposals for a ceasefire or humanitarian pause. So this statement that she made was a week before even worse Israeli war crimes and atrocities were carried out in Gaza. Meanwhile, an Israeli scholar has warned that what Israel is doing in Gaza is, quote, a textbook case of genocide. This is according to Raz Segal, who is an associate professor of Holocaust and Genocide Studies at Stockton University in New Jersey in the United States. He is an Israeli expert on the history of genocide, including the Nazi Holocaust. And he said that Israel has been explicit about what it's carrying out in Gaza, which is a textbook case of genocide. Even the Guardian newspaper, which is a mainstream establishment publication in Britain, even one of the columnists at the Guardian published an article titled, the language being used to describe Palestinians is genocidal. And specifically saying that Israeli politicians are using genocidal rhetoric to refer to Palestinians including Israel's president, Isaac Herzog, who said that there are no innocent civilians in Gaza. He said, quote, it's an entire nation out there that is responsible. The entire nation, he said. And furthermore, in the United States, far-right politicians like the Republican Senator Lindsey Graham, a close ally of Donald Trump, he called for the wholesale destruction of Gaza. He falsely referred to the conflict as a religious war, which is not true. It is an Israeli colonial war. It is about colonialism and ethnic cleansing, not religion. And he called for Israel to level the place. And a member of the Israeli parliament from Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's far-right Likud party, Ariel Kalner, he demanded a repeat of the mass ethnic cleansing of Palestinians. He said, quote, right now, one goal, Nakba a Nakba that will overshadow the Nakba of 1948. So openly calling for ethnic cleansing. This is genocidal. And as if Western hypocrisy could not be enough, while these Western governments like the US and the UK are sponsoring this Israeli genocidal ethnic cleansing in Gaza, meanwhile, at the same moment, these governments, along with Israel, at the United Nations pulled off a ridiculous, cynical stunt accusing China of violating the rights of Muslims. While Israel is massacring Muslims in Gaza and committing genocide against Muslims, the UK published a statement, a joint statement, on human rights violations in Xinjiang, in China, at the UN Third Committee. This was on the 18th of October, the same day when the U.S. vetoed the Brazilian U.N. Security Council resolution calling for humanitarian pauses in Gaza. Hours after Israel bombed a hospital in Gaza, killing hundreds of civilians. A day before Israel bombed one of the oldest churches in Gaza, killing dozens of civilians. Well, this is the statement that 
the Western powers published. And you know who joined them in publishing this statement condemning China for supposedly violating the rights of Muslims in Xinjiang? Israel, the Israeli apartheid regime, whose ruling party is calling for a genocide, another Nakba, mass ethnic cleansing of Palestinians, who are bombing schools and hospitals and committing genocide, they joined this statement with a bunch of Western colonial powers, and by the way, not countries with Muslim majority populations, not countries in the so-called Middle East or West Asia, not countries in North Africa. They didn't join this statement condemning China for supposedly violating the rights of Muslims. It was the Western colonial powers, including Israel, which is committing genocide, and including the United States, which has killed millions of Muslims just since 2001 in the so-called war on terror, in the invasions of Iraq and Afghanistan, the war on Syria, the war on Libya, the war on Yemen. The U.S. has killed millions of Muslims in the past two decades, and these other Western powers have a history of colonizing Muslim-majority countries and committing genocide and ethnic cleansing. And they signed this statement. They had the gall to sign this statement condemning China for supposedly violating the rights of Muslims right in the middle of all of this at the United Nations. Imagine being this sociopathic. Imagine being this narcissistic, this arrogant as the Western colonial powers to do this while they're sponsoring Israeli genocide. I mean, it truly is shocking. There is no end to Western hypocrisy. But maybe there is a slight silver lining in all of this because as we speak, for the first time I've ever seen, there is actually a kind of rebellion going on inside some of these Western governments by officials who can clearly see that they are complicit in genocide and war crimes and atrocities. And the Huffington Post published a very interesting article titled Mutiny Brewing Inside State Department Over Israel-Palestine Policy. It notes that morale is low and some U.S. State Department staffers are preparing to formally express their opposition to President Joe Biden. Very interesting. It notes, and of course, when they say Biden, it's bipartisan. Donald Trump, the leading Republican candidate, he's also supporting Israeli genocide. This is completely bipartisan. And in fact, on the 20th of October, the U.S. Senate unanimously passed a resolution with 97 votes to zero titled Standing with Israel Against Terrorism, expressing support for the Israeli apartheid regime, which is committing genocide. Total bipartisan support from both Republicans and Democrats for this brutal fascistic apartheid regime. But anyway, going back to this article in the Huffington Post, it notes that there are some officials in the U.S. State Department who say that Secretary of State Antony Blinken and his most senior advisors are overlooking widespread internal frustration. Some department staff said they feel as if Blinken and his team are uninterested in their own experts' advice as they focus on supporting Israel's expanding operation in Gaza. An anonymous State Department official said, quote, there's basically a mutiny brewing within state at all levels. I've never seen something like this happen, ever. And in fact, even a former top U.S. State Department official resigned in protest over Washington's support for the Israeli apartheid regime as it's committing genocide. His name is Josh Paul, and he published an open letter on LinkedIn. He previously served as the Director of Congressional and Public Affairs at the Bureau of Political Military Affairs at the State Department. And he oversaw communication strategies in support of U.S. security assistance, arms transfers, and global defense partnerships. And he was also a consultant on Palestine specifically, so working on the issue of Israel-Palestine. In his open letter, he said that the U.S. has been blindly supporting one side, that is Israel, and opposing any attempts at peace, which is exactly what we saw in the U.N. Security Council, where the U.S. voted down both of the resolutions trying to bring about peace. And specifically in his open letter, I was surprised to see, I mean, you know, there's a lot of rhetoric here where he talks about democracy and human rights in Ukraine. So he, you know, he drank the Kool-Aid. He believes a lot of this 
Western propaganda. But he acknowledged that is Israel is carrying out collective punishment. And he specifically said, he mentioned house demolitions and he said, ethnic cleansing, occupation, and apartheid are preventing peace and our crimes. So that's him very clearly, you know, he didn't say it explicitly, but he's very obviously referencing Israel's ethnic cleansing, occupation, and apartheid. Now, around the world, this kind of statement is very common. It's not surprising, but it is quite shocking to see a high-level State Department official resign in protest and say that very clearly. And this is the view that represents the global majority, the majority of the world population. And you can see this reflected in the statements, for instance, of people like Malaysia's former prime minister, Mahathir Mohamed. Again, this is the former leader of Malaysia, which is a country that, you know, is not necessarily, you know, antagonistic to the West. It had positive relations with the West. It was a former British colony, but this is not an anti-imperialist country whose government, you know, has a revolutionary foreign policy like, you know, like, for instance, Venezuela, Cuba, Nicaragua, even, you know, Iran, China. And in his statement, the former Malaysian prime minister, Mahathir, he said that, quote, if the American government withdraws its support for Israel and stops all military aid to the regime, Israel would not have carried out the genocide and mass murders of Palestinians with impunity. He said, the crux of the matter is that all of these Israeli atrocities on the Palestinians stem from American support for Tel Aviv. The United States government needs to come clean and tell the truth. He said, Israel and its IDF, that's the Israeli military, are the terrorists. That's what he said. The United States is blatantly supporting terrorists. So what is the United States, he asked. That was the Malaysian former Prime Minister Mahathir bin Mohammed. This is the view of the, the Global South, almost all countries in the Global South. And again, when we say Global South, we're talking about more than 80% of the world population. So they're actually the global majority. They can clearly see that Israel is carrying out this genocidal assault. Again, even a prominent Israeli scholar who's an expert on genocide has, has said that Israel, its attack on Gaza is a textbook case of genocide. And the United States and the other Western colonial powers are wholeheartedly supporting this genocidal assault. And the U.S. is using its veto power at the U.N. to prevent peace, to block ceasefires, to block humanitarian pauses. And meanwhile, the U.S. is giving billions of dollars of military assistance to Israel. It is a direct accomplice in war crimes, which even mainstream Western human rights organizations like Amnesty International have admitted are war crimes, which even top UN experts have said amount to ethnic cleansing. All of the sources that I've looked at today are completely mainstream, and yet there's so much propaganda out there about Israel, about Palestine, that it's important to be able to sift through the propaganda and look for the facts. That is what I try to do here at Geopolitical Economy Report. I'm Ben Norton, the editor of Geopolitical Economy Report. I want to thank everyone for joining me today. This is, of course, very tragic, and I will be continuing to follow the events very closely and reporting on these issues. I want to thank everyone. I will see you next time.